for you guys and today I have yet another unboxing video slash install video and I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. I've had this part for about a month to maybe two months or so and I've never gotten around to do it because I did have some severe things that I needed to do to my car aka take the whole dash out and some other things that you didn't see because they were off camera. But now I feel like I have all that out of the way and I can go ahead and install this mystery part. Well, you know what it is by the thumbnail, but install this part of my car. The part and let me unbox it. First of all, the boxing job was terrible, just letting you know, but I don't really care about that. As long as everything works fine and isn't broken, then I won't have a problem with it. And I want to give a huge thanks to Summit Racing because without them, I might not have even gotten this part. But I'm pretty sure there were other vendors, but I got mine from Summit Racing. And don't mind me, I'm just cutting the box. Don't come to me for all the safety. The safest way is to open in the box because I don't know. Let's see what we have inside. Boom! We got some gauges, guys. We have an AFR gauge, guys. And this is definitely what I've been needing. And I want me to get a great data log going and have Peggy running A1, if you know what I mean. Alright, should be fairly. Ooh. I like it. Look at this. Can y'all see it? It's the black face. Ooh, looks real nice. Look at it, looking all nice. I think I'm supposed to have a white face in here, which is probably what I'll end up using, even though I love the way the black face looks, but the rest of my gauges in my cluster are white. So just a little uniform look. All right, so I have some wiring, I have power and ground. I have, I think, yeah, the white face, like I said. And I have the oxygen sensor thing. And I also have a bong that I'm not gonna end up using because I'm using my secondary O2 sensor. And they also have some wire crimpers or whatever they're called. But yeah, I guess let's get started with this install. Okay, so I pretty much know everything that I have to do and I don't think there's a specific order in order to do it But I just know I need to get these things done But I'm gonna start off from right here by removing the trim around the shift boot and removing the shift knob and Unplugging this uh, this is plugged in behind the trim and you'll see what I'm talking about once I do that Alright, next is to remove these four eight millimeter bolts and then it should, this plate should lift up over the shifter and you should be able to see the transmission under it. Just so y'all won't be a fool and an idiot like me, I tried picking this little plate up and it didn't quite work like that because the insulating piece under it, I believe it was taped like or stickied or glued or whatever it's called to the metal and that's to keep the heat from the transmission from coming up so easily and yeah, I just tore a little bit of it. But I don't care about that. I'm about to keep on going with this. I'm not taking it completely off. I'll just slide the wire through right here because I can see the exhaust and I don't have any light under there so you can't see it right now, but I'm gonna slide it through here and then it's already cut on the top right here. So I can stick the wire through here and then I can go ahead and run it through the dash. All 
All right, so I'm underneath the car, and as you can see where I'm flashing the light, the wire is coming through from, this is the shifter, and the where I'm trying to go is right here, where the secondary O2 sensors are on my X-pipe. I don't know if you can see it or not, because of the angle, this is where I'm going. Now it's time for me to undo this O2 sensor. All right, so this is where I'm at so far. As you can see, I ran the wires already. And this is what I did. I ran them through here, made sure to zip tie it right here so it wouldn't be any moving, along with the zip tying that I showed you under the car. And then I made it come out through right here on the side of this panel that everything's in. And that's where I'm at so far. I'm about to go ahead and get ready to mount this now. As you can see, I have the 3M double-sided tape on this side, and I've already put the gauge in here. I just haven't taken the plastic off of it, and it looks pretty decent. I mean, I didn't decide to go with the silver just because I thought it would stick out too much along with the rest of the black in here, but I like this. Yeah, they gave me a silver bezel to go along with the white face, but... I think that's whenever people want to go with, you know, a lighter approach, but I like the black on white, if you ask me. Alright, so the next thing for me to do is to take these wires, and I'm only going to end up using the red and the black one today. And that's just, oh, let me focus this thing to focus. I'm only going to end up using a red and a black one for today just because that's the power in the ground. The blue one is for whenever I'm ready to data log, but I'll need to get an adapter to put on the end of this so it can go into my handheld tuner. And the white one, I'm not actually sure what that's for, so I'm just not going to use it. Unless I have to end up using it for data logging, but I don't think I do, but I don't know. So let me go ahead and start trying to take out fuse number five because that's for my instrument cluster and I'm going to attach the power to that and the ground probably to one of these bolts that's around here. So let me get started with that. Alright, so this is probably one of the worst power and ground jobs that I have ever done. But, this is just temporary and I will be fixing it soon. But as for now, it's just to make sure everything is working good. But as I can say, I do like the way this gauge looks. I do. And the position it's at. And, like, y'all can't tell on camera because the camera, like, you won't see my view. But I think I can see every gauge from here and I think I will like the way it looks when I'm driving. But let me go ahead and connect the battery back and see if everything's working properly. Hopefully it is. Fingers crossed. All right, battery is back connected. Let me put my key in and... Oh wait, is my car supposed to be on for this? Let me see, I'm kind of nervous. It's gonna be loud. Oh, let me open the garage. Yay! It's on! Yes! It's because I didn't have the wire actually on the fuse and now it's on and I can't complain. <laughs> Look at here. Meanwhile. 
All right, so I've been driving around for about 10 to 15 minutes and everything seems to look like it's going smoothly with the gauge and everything. While normal driving, it's around the same area that it is idling, which is kind of lean if you ask me, but I did not do a wide open throttle pull. I'm gonna save that for a drier day and a more sunny day if you ask me. But in the meantime, I'm gonna be trying to find the wire that I need to splice into the blue wire I was talking about so I can go ahead and data log. And then, you know, I'll make that into a video with splicing that and attaching it to the blue wire and actually data logging with wide open throttle pull to show you guys what my car is running and I mean, I finally got an AFR gauge like you guys have been begging me to do and some of my friends have been begging me to do and I'm pretty ecstatic about that. Go ahead and like the video and share with your friends with Cobras and let them know how easy it is to install a gauge like this with a gauge pod in the steering column. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and I'll catch you in the next video. But always remember to do more, be more, believe more, and achieve more. And I thank you all for watching. <laughs>